Good morning, and a happy third Sunday in Advent to us all. And we're finding we're slowly, Steve and I, we're slowly figuring things out again, not just Steve and I, but all of us, you know, like we used to have the announcements before and then the processional hymn, even though I will be by myself this morning, but we're finding our way back, and that's exciting. Welcome to you all near and far to our worship service on the third Sunday of Advent. And I give thanks to my friend and colleague, the Reverend Catherine Bailey. She will be presiding next Sunday here, and uh, that gives me a little bit of break to get ready for the holidays. Uh, slowly also the Christmas Eve live stream service is taking shape and we uh, are quite optimistic that after the service we will be gathering to uh, for a little event out on the parking lot still the the fire brigade is still debating whether we can have a bonfire or not um, but we will be there and we will be together and there the other debate is uh, apple cider or hot chocolate so we have major decisions to make. Also, uh, today is a day of thanksgiving uh, for the Ismail family. They are now planning for arrival. We wait. The flights should be in being booked. Uh, we have submitted the quarantine plan. As they arrive, don't try to see them because for 14 days they will be quarantined by themselves. Nobody can visit. We will have to provide food and everything they need for those two weeks. Uh, and they will be frequently tested. Uh, but that is the next step in preparation. We hope it can be between one month and four months. Depends a lot on travel, on flight availability and all those things. To, we invite you all to keep in, in our prayers uh, the little girl, Ellie, seven years old, and her family. Uh, she has upcoming heart surgery and then has to go into cancer treatment. And uh, that makes us even more appreciative of the good things uh, we all do experience. And today is one good thing that we can celebrate. Elaine's birthday today. Hey, happy birthday, Elaine. I don't think it's an Advent hymn, but we can still sing. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Elaine. Happy birthday to you and many more. I was told I should announce uh, um, the age, even though I usually don't do that. Uh, but Dean said, uh, after so many years with me, it can be announced. Do you agree? Okay, so Elaine turned 83 today, and we wish her all the best. May her daughter arrive from, from uh, uh, Florida, and may they have a good time together. Now, let us get ready for worship. Let us light the third candle in our Advent wreath. Please follow along with the prayer, and we all will listen to this beautiful hymn Steve has composed. Let us pray. We praise you, O God, for the victory wreath, our Advent wreath, that marks our days of preparation for Christ's advent. As we light the candles on this wreath, strengthen our hearts as we await the Lord's coming in glory. Enlighten us with your grace that we may serve our neighbors in need. Grant this through Christ our Lord, whose coming is certain and whose day draws near. Amen. Something's rising in the east. Come and see. 
come and see something's rising in the east come and see there's a change in about to come sure as comes the dawn in sun bring in hope where there was none come and see come and see there's a calling in the wind come with me come with me there's a calling in the wind come with me when night is dim shining beyond the frosty weather bright as sun and moon together people look east and sign today love the star is on the way Angels announce with shouts of mirth, Christ who brings new life to earth. Set every peak and valley humming with the word, the Lord is coming. People look east and sing today, love the Lord is on the way. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us come together as we pray together. 
Stir up the wills of your faithful people, Lord God, and open our ears to the preaching of John, that, rejoicing in your salvation, we may bring forth the fruits of repentance through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. What have you been doing, Sue? You were slouching there. Like, I don't know what happened. Well, I'm waiting. You're waiting. We all are waiting. But look, we're not slouching. Well, it's kind of boring. Why isn't it Christmas yet? Oh, because we are not ready yet. What do you have to do? Oh, oh. Sermons to write, volunteers to find, Lots of things to organize. That's all. Mm. Some more things. I put up a Christmas tree. No, I have to do that as well. Uh, maybe that's be, be why well, I have to wait because he's late. No. God comes in God's good time. Not always when we want and how we want. I don't know. Do you like that? Me either. Man, God is in charge. Yeah, I know. I want Christmas to be here now. Why? I can't wait. That's a skill we all work on, don't we? Waiting is not easy. We want things when we want them and how we want them, just like Sue, like you very often. Mm. How many more candles? One Sunday candle and then the Christ candle in the middle. Maybe Steve can light them all next Sunday? No, Steve does a good job, but we do that one by one. <sighs> it's hard to wait. Yeah, that we know and agree with. It's hard to wait for all of us. Bonnie, Bonnie, yeah. can I sit with you today? Maybe we can wait together. <laughs> okay. okay, do that. Go to Bonnie and have a good time with Bonnie. Here she comes. If she wiggles too much, that I can't control it. And now it's time to listen to the Word of God. Prophet Zephaniah's message is mostly one of judgment for sin. This reading, however, which comes from the conclusion of the book, talks about coming joy for Judah and Jerusalem. Judgment has led to repentance, and God's salvation is at hand. The first lesson is from the prophet Zephaniah, chapter 3. Sing aloud, O daughter Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exalt with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall fear disaster no more. 
On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will re renew you in his love. He will exalt with you with loud singing as on a day of festival. I will remove disaster from you so that you will not hear bear reproach. I will deal with all your oppressors at that time. And I will save the lame and gather the outcast. And I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time I will bring you home, at that time when I gather you, for, for I will make you renowned, and I will make you praised among all the prophet, peoples of the earth. And when I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. Listen for the leading of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Bring out your joy, for the Holy One of Israel is in your midst. Ring out your joy, for, for the, the Holy, Holy One, One of Israel, Israel is in your midst. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense and he will be my savior bring out, bring your, out joy. your joy for the holy one, one of israel, israel is in your midst therefore you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation and on that day you shall say Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. <clears throat> Bring, Bring out, out your, your joy, joy for, the for the Holy One, one of, Israel of Israel is in your midst. Sing the praises of the Lord for he has done great things and this is known in all the world cry aloud inhabitants of zion ring out your joy for the great one in the midst of you is the holy one of israel <coughs> ring out, ring out joy. your joy for the, for the holy, holy one, one of israel, of israel is in your midst Despite being in prison, Paul is remarkably upbeat as he writes his letter. Here he urges his friends in Philippi to trust God with all their worries and with their concerns, with the hope they will experience God's joy and peace. Our second lesson is from the first letter to the Philippians, chapter 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Listen for the leading of the Spirit. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Now let us prepare to receive the Holy Gospel.
And the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us now listen to the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to the Gospel of Luke from the third chapter. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. John said to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers. Who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds asked him, what then should we do? In reply, he said to them, whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none. And whoever has food must do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized and they asked him, teacher, what should we do? He said to them, collect no more than the amount prescribed for you. Soldiers also asked him, and we, what should we do? He said to them, do not extort money from anyone by threats or false accusation and be satisfied with your wages. As the people were filled with expectation, all were questioning in their hearts concerning John whether he might be the Messiah. John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the throng of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So with many other exhortations, he proclaimed the good news to the people. Good news, the word of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And now be only God's truth be told, and may only God's truth be heard. Amen. Friends, the closest people to me are more than four meters away, so I think I can dare to take off my mask for the message. Not that my face is so beautiful, but it may be easier for you to follow. Well, my friends, he appears only in a very, very few nativity sets. No wonder John, with his camel hair coat and a rather dark message, repent. Here he is now in front of our inner eyes, a rough fellow, so it seems. But appearances can be deceiving. His call is for people to get serious with their faith 
a spiritual powerhouse, we know people came from near and far to be baptized by him. Yet he knew he was not the Savior. And the Messiah to come would baptize them with more than just water. Appearances can be deceiving. A few weeks ago, we heard the story of priest Eli and Hannah. Eli thought Hannah was drunk, but she wasn't at all. Hannah was faithful, and God was doing great things through her. Well, appearances can be deceiving. There are more stories about that, but today let us focus on Joseph. Joseph in our nativity sets. Just think about it. Mary coming to him and saying, I'm pregnant, but not from another man, and certainly not from you. God has chosen me to do great things. Well, most of us, men or women, would probably head for the exit of that relationship, wouldn't we? Joseph most likely would have too, had it not been for the angel, for God filling him in and him believing. Appearances can be deceiving. In faith, we're being taught to look a little deeper. Faith brings a change of perspective into our lives. Just think about that, loving our adversary. In faith, we begin to think twice. What is God telling us through the events of our lives? Looking at the picture, you probably know where this is going because it is so obvious, or is it? Sometimes we know there is more. Yet many other times, we all are ignorant. We all are because I don't know what I don't know. That's where faith comes into play. Advent and Christmas are about so much more than a cute story or a cute little baby. The variety of our nativity sets, and thank you so much for submitting a variety of pictures and scenes, the variety of these sets spread out over time and space, cultures, and all kinds of situations, they give us a hint. The message is not about what meets the eye, about an event in what we now call Palestine about 2,000 years ago. The message goes deeper and stretches over all times, all places, all cultures, right into your heart. Just look at Joseph again, who probably became the scorn of his village. Ha. Ah. Your fiancé is pregnant. How come? And who has she been with, if it wasn't you? Why are you still with her? Yet Joseph has gotten the message and believes. He is no longer deceived by what meets the eye. Joseph will stand by Mary. And just imagine her relief. But maybe even more importantly, Joseph is true in his faith. He trusts 
God above all. Christmas once again, with the pandemic not being over, oh how I wish it was. Like many, I too struggle with anxiety. What will the future be like? What will remain of our parish and congregation? And how can we do effective ministry in the future, a future that at times appears rather challenging? But appearances can be deceiving. When people are smiling, do you assume they are happy in general? If someone has a job where they make a decent living, do you assume they have no real worries? If someone has a newer car that appears to be quite fancy, do you assume their life must also be nice and fancy? Well, assumptions are a dangerous thing and almost always incorrect. And most of us have something in our lives that we are going through, dealing with, struggling with. Most people carry a hurt, have a trauma of some kind in their lives. And they are always very, very personal. No point in comparing, as I see and hear very often. Just look at such and such. It could be so much worse. The pain and hurt we carry with us is a personal thing. And even in our nativity set, we see people carrying their personal trauma with them to the manger. Joseph for sure, but also Mary. And the shepherds who were living at the absolute minimum, always threatened by hunger and for the most part homeless. You and I are carrying our hurt, pandemic related or otherwise. For the most part we hide it and people see our smiles or happy faces. When you look at the characters of the nativity like we are doing at Joseph by looking at Joseph today, let us look a little deeper. When you meet with neighbors and friends, even with family these days, look a little deeper. There might be more than meets the eye at first glance. John the baptizer was taken as the Messiah by many, but he knew that that was just an appearance. We look at the characters of the manger as sweet and happy, but there is a different backstory they carry with them. And the other way around, in all the uncertainty and anxiety of the ongoing pandemic, I believe that God is indeed teaching us many a positive, helpful lesson. God gave him a hint, and Joseph did not allow the appearance to deceive him. He looked deeper and trusted God. May we be able to do the same today and throughout our Advent and Christmas journey. Amen.
This, again, is the time for us to reflect on what we can give back. Because we receive God's guidance, God's love. What can we give back in return? Let us reflect and let us give. Be still, for the presence of the Lord is near. In this season of watching and waiting, let us pray for all people and places that yearn for God's presence. Holy God, renew your church and raise up leaders who announce good news. Grant peace to congregations and seminarians in the midst of transition. Guide the work of candidacy and call committees. Hear us, O God. Your mercy, Your mercy is, is great. great. Creating God, your spirit brought forth the earth and all that is in it. Breathe life into us that we are inspired to live in harmony with one another and the great planet. Today we bring before you all those who have been impacted by the deadly and destructive tornadoes in the United States. We pray for the families of those who lost their lives, those who were injured, those who have lost their homes and businesses. We pray for all first responders and aid organizations. Please give comfort and strength to all of them, O Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Your mercy is great. Shepherding God, you lead your people in paths of righteousness. Raise up prophets in our own day who warn against captivity to greed and point us to the freedom found in generosity. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. great. Nurturing God, you come near in times of worry and need. Cradle us in your arms that we trust you and are not afraid. Attend to any who are hungry, imprisoned, or ill on this day. We pray for those living with long-term health problems and disabilities, remembering especially Ellie and her family. And we pray for Lilo. Those in any other need or trouble, Wendy, Abby, Bailey, and for Holly. And, and we give thanksgiving for the people at St. Mark's and for those who have died, Betty Jeans. Oh God, continue, as, <clears throat> oh God, as con COVID continues to rage in both the Delta and Omicron variants, we pray for all those not yet vaccinated who are there thereby stressing all medic our medical res resources, that they may be inured to accept immunization 
for their own health and for the health of the community. We pray for all health care workers as they work in extremely difficult situations. And we pray for those whose life-saving life surgeries have been postponed because of the COVID numbers. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. <coughs> Nurturing God, you come near us in times of worry and need. Cradling us in your arms. And rejoice in God, you exalt, you exalt over us in singing. Enliven the song of this assembly and bless the ministry of church musicians, especially Steve, Gail, Martha. With instruments and dance, join our voices to the song of all creation. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy, your mercy is, is great. great. We give you thanks for your servants who showed us your goodness and grace. We pray for Martin, Catherine, Dawn. By the power of your spirit, keep us steadfast in faith until we make our home with you. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of new life, you come amongst us in the places we least expect. Receive these prayers and those of our hearts. In the name of Jesus, amen. And with the words Jesus gave us to pray, we continue in prayer, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. to you it's a peace that the world cannot give it's a peace that the world cannot understand peace to know peace to live my peace I give And so, glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. And the God of hopefulness, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, fill you with joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit now and forevermore. Amen. Proclaims your greatness, Lord. I sing my Savior's praise. You who looked upon my lowliness, and and every age, this blessing I proclaim. You have done for me, and holy is your name. All who live in holy fear, your mercy ever flows. 
mighty arm you dash the proud their scheming hearts expose the ruthless you have cast love a good Irish too. And now let us go and be in peace. Christ is near.